Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it's time for the Q&A, so let's go ahead and knock this out. Alright, first question. Should martial artists, MMA, BJJ, kickboxing, etc., be lifting at least somewhat heavy weights? Somewhat. They need to be maxing out. They need to be lifting one rep maxes. Do you know why? These are high force production sports. At some point in every one of these sports, you are going to have to hit another human being, an athlete who is a trained fighter, not your average Joe, as hard as you possibly can. If you punch your kick as hard as you possibly can, how much of your force production are you producing? 50%? 70%? No. 100%. It is max effort. If you kick as hard as you possibly can with everything that you have, that is a wonder at max force. Right? Why wouldn't you need to raise your absolute strength? Like, why wouldn't that be beneficial in any contact sport? It doesn't even have to be a martial artist. Any contact sport. Absolute strength matters. And the same thing, people say, well, it's more about repeated speed strength. Okay, let me ask you a simple question. Who can produce more force on speed strength? Assuming the training is somewhat similar. Someone who can squat 500 pounds or someone who can squat 300 pounds? Which one of those can produce more leg and hip force? Repeatedly. Or the person who can squat 500 how about punching or pull, pushing? Someone who can bench 400 versus someone who can bench 250. Obviously, they're the one who can bench 400. Do you know why? Because if someone who benches 250, their max is 250. That's nothing. They can't produce upper body force. They're weak. The person who can bench 400 can in a single match do more force, absolute force, than that person can, but they can do it 30 times in the same round. They can exceed that person's maximum force repeatedly over and over and over and over. So why wouldn't you want to be training for absolute strength and speed strength and everything else? And I've got videos explaining that though. I have multiple videos I've got explaining specifically why raising your absolute strength also raises your speed strength. Because the force that you produce on your speed strength explosively is higher. They carry over into each other. Yes, you need to be maxing out. It would be of great value to you. The downside is when you say that, people say, so you're saying that replaces skill? No, only an idiot thinks that. Only an absolute, complete brain dead moron ignoramus would interpret it that way so if i say that a skilled a highly skilled okay again there's the word a highly skilled highly trained martial artist who can bench 400 and squat 500 can produce way more force than the same level of skilled martial artist who can squat 300 and bench 250 if you interpret that as me saying they don't need to be highly skilled you were probably too stupid to be able to read. You probably can't even read these comments. You probably have a 60 IQ. So stop displaying it with those responses. This assumes you're actually good at fighting already. This assumes that you're trained. This assumes that you're good at football or rugby or whatever other contact sport, right? That's the assumption. This is how you get better doesn't replace skill no one no one is saying that because every time this comes up people people reply that that's what I'm saying if you think that that's what I'm saying then you're probably pretty close to being basically mentally uh, handicapped I won't use the R word but you probably are borderline R word right you probably actually are so you should probably shut up when other people are talking all right next question 47-year-old lifter with 32 years of training. 
At this point, if I'm not competing, what breadth ranges should you be training in? Um, give me any info. Why don't you think about your question? Okay, you said you're 40, you're not competing in anything. Are you trying to improve? Because that's the real question here then, isn't it? Are you trying to improve and get better? Well, if you're trying to improve and get better, you need to train the same rep ranges as everyone else. You need to be doing everything from heavy singles all the way up to 10 plus rep sets, just like everyone else does. Right? Why wouldn't you? Don't you want to gain muscle? Right? Well, you need those that rep work to gain muscle. Don't you want good absolute strength and force production? Well, you need to be doing heavy singles. Now, people will hear that and say, well, you can't say it 40. Yeah, I can't say that at 47. I know plenty of coaches who have 70-year-old women do this stuff. Guess what? Improves their quality of life. Right? Are you trying to improve? Then that's what you need to do. Are you not trying to improve? You just want to maintain? And, and by the way, I'm not knocking that choice. If you just want to maintain, then it doesn't matter, does it? I'm going to say your rep range is probably completely irrelevant. Do whatever makes you happy. If you're just trying to maintain, if you don't care about progress anymore, and you just want to kind of keep what you have, want to not get hurt, I would say just do whatever's fun then. Just like all the kids who go to the gym who don't make any progress are like, I work out to have fun. I, I do what I enjoy. Okay. And they don't make progress, but they have fun. And then they just kind of stay where they are. Then, then do that. Go in and have fun. I'd recommend that you actually try to make progress. So everything from 1s up to 10s, maybe even 15s or 20s on a couple of some lifts. Some of your smaller movements, you do 15 to 20. So I'm going to recommend the 1 to 20 rep range. Right? But I don't have a recommendation if you're just, if you want to maintain. I don't know, just do whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Have fun. All right, next question. Jason, how do you program a deload on conjugate? Well, it depends on what's going on with my client. I don't train on my deload weeks. I, I mess with maybe a few bands and kettlebells. All right. Usually my deload weeks, I don't have access to equipment oftentimes. All right. I don't have easy access to equipment on my deload weeks. So I just do whatever. A lot of my clients, we do deload weeks when they go on vacations and people take enough vacations and holidays, as they call it in the UK, they call it a holiday. That throws Americans off. We have no clue what you guys are saying when you say a holiday. It's like when you start weighing in stones. Because to us, a holiday means Christmas, Easter. We call it a vacation. All right. So, if you go on a vacation, well, you still may not have access to stuff. Just play with some bands. Schedule deloads because I have a lifter who needs a deload because they're getting beat up, right? So ones that we're programming, just cut everything in half. We do speed work, okay? We do speed work. So I take their max effort and their dynamic effort days and I just make both of them into dynamic effort days. Uh, we take the bands and chains off. So if they've been doing 30% plus bands and chains, we go down to just 30%, no bands and chains. In fact, that's what I'll program anyways, even if they're doing... 50% straight weight. We'll go down to 30% for the speed work and just do the speed work on both days. Supplemental lifts, whatever they're lifting, we just cut it in half and take short breaks. If they've been, you know, working with 200 pounds for sets of 10s on a supplemental lift, we'll go to 100 pounds for sets of 10 on a supplemental lift and just cut the brakes down because we're not fatigued anyways. That's it. That's how we deload. Basically cut everything in half in terms of intensity. And do it for a week and then come back back into normal training. It's that simple. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time in part two.